Hey, this is Kenneth. Yes, Capital Advantage Tutoring. And it's my job to get you past the Series 7 and the SA exam. So one of the things, we're going to do some random option shit. I'm going to jump around a little bit. But the one that gets a lot of people is the taxes on the options. And now I'm not going all in on that, but we are going to talk about some of the stuff like cost basis, proceeds, stuff like that. Don't forget to stay to the end because I do questions to show my, even though I talk about taxes, I show questions that show what we're talking about, okay? Also, don't forget to check me out every Tuesday and Thursday night on the two of you live Q&A, baby. It's a real shit show. So let's get into it. Okay, we're going to start with the easy one, the easy one here. So if you buy a call or sell a put, if you buy a call or sell a put, both of those are buying options. What that means is that if you exercise those options, you're going to be buying stock. So then your break even is cost basis. This is cost basis is where you buy something. So again, but remember, exercising is not a taxable event. All you do is set your cost basis. So if you buy a 50 call at three and you exercise it, all you have is a cost basis. There's no taxes yet. Buying a call, selling a put, it's your, your cost basis is your break even. Makes sense. Okay, your break even is your cost basis, whatever you want to do. Then covering it is after you exercise, you exercise, then cover. That means you're selling the stock, right? So you, you bought a 50 call at three, break even's 53. That's your cost basis. If you then exercise and then sell it at 60, your proceeds is 60, and your gain would be the difference of seven. So again, when you buy a call or sell a put, exercise is your cost basis or your break even is your cost basis. It does not, it is not taxable yet, not until you complete the trade by selling the shares that you bought. That's that. That's one thing. Now, on the other side, if you buy a put or you sell a call, those are selling options. You buy a put, you have the right to sell. You sell a call, you're obligated to sell. Those are selling options. So your break even is your proceeds. So if you exercise, you buy a 50 put at three, your break even is 47. You're selling the stock at 50 minus three, which is 47. So according to the IRS, you sold it at 47. And then just by exercising it is not a taxable event. Remember that. Just exercising it alone is not a taxable event. You'll have to cover it. So if you sold it at 47 here and then you bought it at 40, then that's your cost basis. Where you bought the stock is the cost basis. Remember that. So I sold it technically at 47 and I bought it at 40. I make $7. My cost basis is 40. My proceeds is 7 that's if I use this. If I bought, my cost basis would be 47. And then only, and then only if I bought it back at 40 or something, would my cost basis be 40. If you don't see the word buy back or cover, you don't have a taxable event. I'll say that again. If you don't see the word buy back or cover, you do not have a taxable event. Exercising alone is not a taxable event. So again, we bought a 50, put a three, according to the IRS. You sold it for a proceeds of 47. And then if and only if you bought it back, here in this case, you bought it back for 40, cost basis of 40, your taxable gain is seven. That is the basics of this. That screws a lot of people up. But remember, if you don't have the word sell in there, you do not have a taxable event. I'll try to do two questions to show this. Okay, so here's a question. Number 45, we're looking at this one. Let me put a box around it so we know which one we're looking at. So I don't get the, what about this one? What? Okay, here we go. Now, a customer buys one XYZ June 50 call at three. The market value of XYZ rises to 60, rises to 60, and the customer exercises the call. What is the tax consequence as a result of these transactions? Okay. So if you remember what I just said, like literally 30 seconds ago, I buy a 50 call at three, so my break even is 53. We get that. That's also my cost basis of 53. Let's go through the thing. Okay, well, it's not a long-term capital gain. Options are always short-term. Remember that. An investment tax credit. Now, nah, throw away that one. Now, we have a choice of, is it a cost basis? So, it is a cost basis or profit. So, what well, ran to 63. I bought a 50 call three. So, that looks like, oh, I have a $7 profit. No, I don't have a $7 profit because I never freaking sold it. Does anywhere here say I sold the stock? Why no, Ken? It does not. So it can't be a it can't be a capital gain of seven because I didn't sell anything. If I had sold it at 60, yes, I would have a capital gain of seven. But since I didn't, all I have is a cost basis of 53 bucks a share, and boom, that's one down. Moving on. Okay, here we go with another question. A customer purchases an XYZ 45 call for four when the stock is at 43. 
Okay, I don't never care where it is when I put it on. If the stock rises to 51 and the customer exercises the call, which of the following statements is true? Okay. So let's go with this. We, we know, I know you guys didn't fall for this again. Nowhere here does it sell I sold it. So I now know that neither one of these can be right. The numbers don't work anyway, but let me put it, let me put it X. They're wrong. They're out. We knock them out, baby. We just knock that shit out. Be a savage. So we know that can't be true because we never sold it. So now the question is. What, oh, we, all we care about is cost basis. Okay. Well, the break even on a, buying a call or even selling a call is strike plus premium. So it's 45 plus four. It's got to be the 49 cost basis. Has to be this one because this would not work. Okay. That's one. That's two. We got two down. Let's get some more questions. Let's have some more fun. Okay. Let's try this one. This is the married put versus a protective put. I mean, a lot of the tech stuff is the same, but let's go into this. So now, if I buy stock uh, today, October 15th, well, it's two days from now, still in the future. I buy shares, 100 shares of IBM at 40, and I buy the put at the same time. That's called a married put. And there's no problem. There's no extension. There's no problem with the holding period. If I hold it until 10, 16, 2024, it's a long-term gain. So if I buy a call, if I stock, and buy a put on the same day, that's a married put according to the IRS, and there is no effect on the holding period, so once I've held the stock for more than a year, it's a long-term gain because we know that anything held over a year, held over a year is a long-term gain. Good. Okay, now, if I buy the put any time after, any day after the day I bought the stock, this wipes out my holding period, literally gone until the put is exercised or sold or whatever. So if I buy the put anywhere between 10 16 2024 and 10 15 2025 before I get long-term status, I wipe out my holding period. So that means if I buy the stock on 10, 15, 2024, and on 10, 15, 2025, I buy a put, that entire 365 day holding period is gone and it goes back to zero until I get the put. So don't do it. The reason they do that is they didn't want people getting a gain, the IRS getting a gain, and then buying the puts to extend their position without risk and get the long term status. So that's that. You're going to get a question on this. Married put is cool. It doesn't affect the long-term status. If so, if you buy a put on the same day or after a year and a day, then there's no impact. But if you buy it on the, anywhere between the day plus one and three, and before you get long-term status, once you buy that put, you wipe out the long-term holding period. Okay, next. Okay, now we have, if you buy a call, buy stock, Jesus, if you buy stock and then sell a call, that's a covered call. Okay, buy stock, sell a call, Cover call. Now, that's great. That's for income. It's super safe. Anyone can do it. However, your cost basis does not change. So if you buy stock at 50 and you sell the call at three, yes, your break even is 47, but your cost basis stays at 50. And this is a separate transaction. And this would be, a, if this expires, it'll be a short term capital gain. And then this will be whatever it is. Because remember, options are under a year, they're like max in nine months. So they're almost always going to be a short-term gain. I'll get into that in a second. So now, <clears throat> if you buy stock and then sell a call, that's a covered call. This does not affect you. There are three things that don't affect cost basis. One is a covered call. Another is a dividend. And the third is accrued interest. But here we're talking about dividends. So covered calls, whenever you buy stock at 50 and then you sell a call against it, your cost basis, cost basis stays where you bought the stock. Because remember, cost basis is where you buy proceeds is where you sell. And again, when this expires, that becomes a long term, a short term gain. Now, let's say you do exercise it, right? Say you exercise it, your cost basis is 50. And what happens is this break even becomes your proceeds. So if you buy the stock at 50, sell at 55, call three, and then you exercise, now it's like your cost basis is 50 and your proceeds is the 58, which is the break even just for the call. It's gonna be 58. They still get you for eight bucks, but they just, it doesn't affect cost basis. That's that. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about remember, options are under a year. So if you buy options and you hold them to the end, they're a short term gain, and you sell options and hold them again to the end, they're a gain, they're a short term gain or loss. Anyway, okay, options, normal options are nine months max, right? They're usually shorter than that, but they're not over a year. So any option trade on its own will always be a short term gain, whether you buy or a loss. If you buy an option and you sell it and you let it expire, that's a capital loss. If you sell an option and you let it expire, that's a capital gain. 
both of them will be short term. Now that's interesting. So anytime an option expires, that's at a capital gain or loss. If you buy an option and it expires, that's a capital loss. If you sell an option and it expires, it's a capital gain. Always short term. However, if you have a leap, which is a long-term equity appreciation product, whatever, um, if it's over a year, if you buy the call and you hold it for more than a year, okay, you buy the call and you hold it for more than a year, that's going to be a long-term gain when it expires or you sell it. However, if you sell the call, a leap, and you hold it for, and you have that position for two and a half years, it's still going to be a short-term gain no matter what. Because short sales are always short term. Okay, again, short sales are always short term. No matter what, no matter how long you have the position, short sales are short term. Hope that helps. Now we got one more thing to do, the actual trading of options. When you buy and sell, like with opening and closing transactions, how is that tact? Let's get into that. Okay, so here's a good question. We'll do a couple of them. So a customer sells two October 50 calls at two and later closes a position at five. What is the result for tax purposes? So, okay, first of all, we sold them and then we bought them. So we sold them at two, bought them at five. That's a $3 loss times two. That's a $600 loss. So we got that. That's easy, right? That should be pretty straightforward. We have a $600 capital loss because we sold it. Good old Teddy. Now, again, I sell a 50 call two, buy it at five. I lose three times two because there's two options. That's a that's a $600 loss. Now, even if I had bought this, right? If I had bought these instead, I can always change these around. Oh, I'm not going to do it there because I'm going to lose my shit. But say I change this to a buy, right? Eh, that looks horrible, but I'm going to do it anyway. So let's say this was a buy and this was a sell. So I bought it at two, sold it at five. That's a $3 gain. It's really a six times two is $600 gain. Again, that would be a short-term gain because unless it says leap, these options are short-term. Remember, options are short-term whether you buy or sell, okay? Now... <clears throat> Again, short sales are always short term, but this one, it, we sold it first, which is a short sale. Then we bought it back, so it's a short term anyway, but it's under a year. Okay, let's try some more. We have some more of these. Puppies. Okay, everyone take a look at this one. This one's a bitch of a question, but if you think about it, it's not so bad. So with the S&P 100 index at 238, customer writes five 245 calls at three and writes five 235 puts at two. The customer later buys the calls at four and the puts expire worthless. I love it. It's like everything here. Okay, now, so... We sold five calls at three. So that would be my, pro since we bought them back, now remember something, this is the next part of this. If you actually buy the options back, the break even, I mean, the, it's not the break even, it's the strike price, right? So if I sell the five calls at three and then I bought them at four, that's really just a sell and a buy, right? So that's really, at the end of the day, I have a, a proceeds of three, a cost basis of four. Okay, now, and then I sold five puts at two and the expired worth this was like buying them for zero but I'll, I'll put expire expire is like buying for zero okay that's what it's like so let's go through this i sold the call for three i bought it for i lost a dollar times five i lost 500 i sold the put at two and it expired worthless which says you buy it for nothing which is positive two times five equals a thousand, right? So then I, so if you think about it, I lost 500 and I made a thousand. So I have a, I have a $500 capital gain, which is short term because options are goddamn short term. That's the way this works. Okay. Options are short term. Let me, I mean, I think I have one more I can do. A lot of people screw these up because they get freaked out by it, but it shouldn't be that hard. Well, this wasn't what I was looking for, so I'm happy I found this one. So a customer writes one ABC Gen 30 call three when the ABC is 32. Don't care. The option is exercise and covered with the stock person 37. Ah, so we got both sides. There's the word covered. I love it. So it's throwing shit out. So let's do this, baby. I'm so excited. I'm fucking stuttering. Now, <clears throat> sold a 30 call at three. So since I sold it, my break even is going to be 33, and that is my proceeds okay then the stock went to 37 and remember i'm bearish right so i don't want to go down i don't even have to do that and then it went to 37 and we covered by buying it that's my cost basis i love that we did this i have a proceeds of 33 and a cost basis of 37 so i lost 400 dollars because i covered it from a short-term loss i'm an idiot it's a short-term loss because i sold it for 33 proceeds Bought it for 37 cost basis. 
Boom. I didn't even want that. It's like a gift just when you're doing the right thing because you turn out people out. Sometimes shit works out. I freaking love it. Okay, moving on. So here's the next question. Let's box it out, baby. Do we know what we're looking at? Number 10. So this is what I want you to understand. Sometimes you're going to hear the word taxable event, whatever, taxable event, taxable effect. It just means did you make money or lose money for the most part? It, either it's cost basis proceeds or is it a gain or loss? Don't overthink it. Don't be like, oh my God, it's so hard. Sometimes you're just saying, did I make money or not? So let's try this. So I bought a 60 call at five. At, when the stock's at 58, do not give a shit. Now then, the stock increased to 70. Okay, I do care now. Then he closed it. Ah, he closed it at uh, 12. So then we sold it at 12. So we have a, now since you bought and sold, don't worry about the break even part. You have a cost basis of five, a proceeds of 12, $700 gain. Boom. And it's short term because options are under a year. So it has to be short term capital gain. They don't ask, but it's a cap gain. So you bought it at five, sold it at 12. A boom. There you go. Hope that helps a little bit clear some of the stuff up. I am sure there's some option stuff with taxes that I didn't cover, but that for the most part, that's high target shit on the exam. That's most of what you're going to have to worry about and hope that helps a little bit. If you like what I'm doing, please check me out on YouTube every Tuesday and Thursday night. I do a live Q&A. It's a shit show. It's a lot of fun, a lot of music, and you get to hear me curse even more and yell at people. Okay, I will see you every Tuesday and Thursday night, and wash your hands, baby. Wash your hands. <laughs>